unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language, but the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. Hallelujah. You will open your Bibles to 2 Peter chapter 1 and verses 1. The Bible says, Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. And he says, grace and peace be multiplied. It is multiplied to them. Hallelujah. Through the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ, according as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. Somebody shout hallelujah. Now, I'm going to begin this way. Faith has degrees. Tell your neighbor, faith has degrees. And according to the degrees of faith is the operation of faith. According to the degrees of faith, is the results of faith. Everybody has faith. If you're a believer, everybody has faith. God has accorded to every believer the measure of faith. But you have the responsibility to grow the faith or to leave it as it is. Some people ended at Calvary. They never transcended beyond Calvary. They never went beyond Calvary. And some transitioned from Calvary, the blood that was shed, into the life of the new creation. They've understood what they call the new creation realities. That's what Peter calls present truth. He says, I'll not hesitate to put you in remembrance of these things, even though you know them and be established in the present truth. Present truth means that you have gone beyond Calvary. That mean you don't recognize Calvary. That mean you're not submitted to Calvary. It doesn't mean you don't recognize the power of Calvary. It only means that God doesn't want you to end at the cross. Hallelujah. He wants you to transition from the cross to the life you have in Christ. From the blood that was shed at Calvary to the life which is in the blood. Somebody shout hallelujah. When that man becomes born again, the Bible says he's a new creation in Christ. And the old is passed away and behold a new. And he says, and all things are become of God. You become a new creature. The life of God is in you. Somebody shout hallelujah. You're not alone. So you transition into present truth. When a man is established in present truth, the operation of faith is different from the man who has not understood the difference between present truth and just the basic idea of truth. Because much as there is, there is an absolute difference, but they're all one and the same. It's truth anyway. But there are things in the present day that are not applicable. For example, you read in Moses' time, you read in Abraham's time, for God to make a covenant with you. The Bible says that males were supposed to be circumcised on the eighth day. Are we circumcising in the church as a mandate to say that if a man is not circumcised, therefore he does not have a relationship with God? No, but it existed once as a reality. Are you following what I'm saying? And many such things have existed before as God relates with man, but as man transitions, even the points of the standard of performance changes against the things God operates with man. In the garden, it was one fruit. That was the only difference between man's life and man's death. If you ate the fruit, you would die. If you do not eat it, then you would live. They didn't have the law. They didn't have Moses. They had nothing like that. You understand? When it comes to the Moses dispensation, the standard goes to the commandments, which were the laws. If you obey the law, you leave. If you break the law, you die. 2018, God is not dealing with the church according to Moses or Adam. 
Are you hearing me? When he went to Adam, he said, I am the second Adam. He refused to be associated and affiliated to the first Adamic nature. When he comes to Moses, he says, Moses brought the law, but grace and truth comes by me. Moses was the schoolmaster that led you to me. For the Bible says, for this law was the schoolmaster that led us to Christ. Who is understanding what I'm saying? The law was our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ, that we might be justified by faith. And the next verse says, but after that faith is come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. Somebody shout hallelujah. You're no longer under a schoolmaster. You're no longer under a schoolmaster. Praise God, somebody. Because of the life Christ brought. Somebody shout hallelujah. Now, he has told us, in Philippians chapter 3 and verses 8, he says, Yeah, doubtless I count all things but loss for the excellency of knowledge of Christ Jesus, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things that do come, that I may win Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Give me the message of that from verses 8. Ye all things that I once thought were so important are gone from my life compared to the high privilege, high privilege of knowing Christ Jesus as my master because now you're relating with Christ as the master, not Moses. Somebody shout hallelujah. And he says, firsthand everything I once thought I had, I had going for me is insignificant. Dog dung. Woo. I've dumped it all in the trash so that I could embrace Christ and be embraced by him. I didn't want some petty inferior brand of righteousness that comes from keeping a list of rules when I could get the robust kind that comes from trusting Christ, God's righteousness. He says the other one is inferior. It's an inferior brand of righteousness because it's based on your performance. The better brand is the righteousness by faith in Christ. Hallelujah. But you see, whether you're talking of inferiority of the righteousness of man, right? Versus the righteousness of God. You need to understand where the faith equation fits here. If I go back to the KJV, he says, and be found in him, not having my own righteousness. Are you hearing me? Which is what? of the law, but that which is, listen, through the faith of Christ and the righteousness, which is of God by faith. Right? He has used faith twice in that very scripture. Are you noting? He speaks of how that faith of Christ, right? The righteousness, which is of the law, he says, I don't want to submit myself to the righteousness, which is of the law, but I want that which is through the faith of Christ, right? The righteousness of God, which is by faith. He's saying that when you receive the righteousness of God, right? You start to operate by the faith of Christ. Are you following me? But you can only operate by the faith of Christ because you've received the righteousness of God and you can only operate by the righteousness of God because you have believed by faith. Who is following what I'm saying? God has a standard of giving you righteousness like man has standards. He says your righteousness is as filthy rags. You can never be so right for God to approve you. Even the most rightful man in the world, the, the rightest person you know, the rightest individual you know, has sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible says man at his best is all what? Vanity. Man at his best. Do you know what it means? Man at his best. Even if you say I'm the best individual, I don't drink, I sleep at 7 p.m. I eat right, I sleep right, I walk, all of that. The Bible says Behold, thou hast made my days as a handbreadth, and mine age is nothing before thee. Verily, every man at his best state is altogether vanity. It means even if you're the most composed individual in the world, God, they look at you and say, this woman, eh? you're still vanity. Your nothingness at your best. That is why he says his righteousness is different from your righteousness. And he says, your righteousness is filthy rugs. It has no place for qualification. You can say, oh, I'm bad, I'm a good person. Some of you can compare yourselves with others. You know, eh? 
I, I, I look at that Christian and I'm like, hmm. You know, you can say all you want before God, right? That doesn't make you better. The scriptures speak of a man who said, you know, I thank God because I fast twice a week. I give tithes of mint and cumin. I do this. I do that. And then there was this man who goes to God and says, you know what, God, I'm a sin, I'm fallen. And what? God granted salvation to the man who knew that he was nothing without God. Praise the Lord Jesus. That is why I told people, and I repeat, heaven will surprise. Because we read men by the righteousness of men, not the righteousness which is of God through faith. Now, Paul is telling you, when you go by faith, like we're saying in Philippians, right? When he says by faith, you receive righteousness, isn't it? You receive righteousness. There is a faith that gives a man righteousness. The Bible says Abraham believed and it was reckoned on him for righteousness. By faith, Abraham believed. And it was counted him for righteousness. What made him righteous? He believed. He embraced the faith. When he embraced the faith, when he believed on the God who justifies the ungodly, the Bible says it was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. Who is following what I'm saying? So what was counted of him? Righteousness was counted of him because he had faith. Are you following so, number one, there is a faith that leads to righteousness. The gift of righteousness. The free gift of righteousness is received when you believe that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. When you believe that it's not according to your works and operation, but it's according to the works and operation of Almighty God. When you know that everything that I do, I was right yesterday, I did right yesterday, not because of my ability, but because of the God who works in me, both to will and to do according to his good pleasure. But there are people who still struggle to believe that they are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus through faith. And if you have not understood that, then you cannot transition into the next level of faith. And the next level of faith is the faith of Christ because of the righteousness. You know, Romans chapter 1 and 16, he says, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God and to salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the what? To the Greek. For therein, what, what gives it power? He says, For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. The righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith is what gives the gospel power. When you have not understood the righteousness of God and transitioned from faith to faith, you cannot operate in the power of God. It's that obvious. Who is following what I'm saying? That's why I said faith has degrees. From one level of faith to another, we all have the measure. We all have the measure. But we all operate on a different degree. Because some are growing in faith. Grow ye in faith and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus. The Bible has instructed us, grow ye in grace. Now, some people grow in what we have. It's like having a piece of land. You have, I have, and you all have, and all of us have a piece of land. But one person cultivates and gets fruit out of it, and another has it and it's bare. You all have land, but one is using it and another one is not. Who is understanding what I'm saying? Somebody shout hallelujah. So I was talking about there is a faith you need to believe in the righteousness of God that is imputed on you by faith in God. Right? You need to get to a level of understanding that you are the righteousness of God in Christ because you believed in Christ. And that as long as you still believe in Christ, regardless of what is happening in your life, it will never change. That's why I love Romans 3.20. He says, and now, therefore, by the deeds of the law, there, there, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. And the next verse says, but now, but now, but now, but now, present truth, present truth, present truth. But now the righteousness of God 
without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and by the prophets, even the righteousness of God. God, which is by the faith of Jesus and to all and upon all that believe, for there is no difference, for all have sinned and come, present continuous short of the glory of God, being justified freely through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ. Freely justified. Tell your neighbor, I am freely justified. I fall short, tell him, but I'm freely justified. That's the truth. I'm not justified because of what I did. Uh -uh. I'm justified because of what Jesus did. Somebody said hallelujah. But I don't want to lose somebody here. Again, I'm talking of the faith that brings righteousness. The same decision Abraham decided one day and said, you know what? I'm going to believe you, God. And when he believed God, the Bible says it was counted to him as righteous. So, the first degree of faith allows you to receive the righteousness of God imputed through faith. Right? Who has understood what I just said? The first degree of faith, not measure. We all have the measure. But the first degree of faith comes when you choose to believe that when Christ is given you, righteousness is imputed unto you because you believe. That's faith. And whether you want it or not, you can hear this message many years and not still believe that you're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Or that your righteousness imputed on you by faith has an expiry date. But this is the reality. It's one thing for you to assume you know some. It's another when that thing is working in you. Some people are still not yet convinced that they are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Not according to works, but according to faith in Christ. That's what we're saying in Philippians, right? The righteousness which is of God by faith, right? Now, you receive righteousness. You've received that, that free gift, right? It becomes a gift, right? It's not something you've worked for. It's a gift because you believed, right? You've attained enough faith. To receive the gift of righteousness. You believe that you are the righteousness of God. Right? Now, when you receive that righteousness, God gives you another level of faith. God starts to work in your life another degree of faith. Let's go back to 2 Peter chapter 1. He says, Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus, to them that have obtained like precious faith. They have obtained like precious faith through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus. Who has understood what I just said? They have obtained faith through the righteousness of God. This is what he's saying. You can receive faith to receive the righteousness of God. But when you receive the righteousness of God, you receive another degree of faith. That's what Peter is talking about. Peter is not talking about the faith that gives you righteousness. He's talking about the faith that comes because you have embraced righteousness. Like precious faith. He calls that faith precious. Who is understanding what I'm just saying? He calls that faith precious. So what am I trying to tell you? You cannot receive righteousness except through faith. But when you, by faith, receive righteousness, he gives you another degree of faith because you have received righteousness. That means there is a faith that does not operate in the lives of men who have not embraced the righteousness of God. Who is understanding what I'm saying? I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God and to salvation, to the Jew and to the Greek also. And the next verse says, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. Oh, who is understanding what I'm saying? When a man is simply believing that they're the righteousness of God, 
when have not yet gotten to a place where they have believed. They're still in the process of believing. They are vacillating and oscillating. They are between two opinions. Today they believe that the righteousness of God, tomorrow they don't believe that the righteousness of God. Today they believe that God has imputed righteousness unto them by faith and tomorrow they don't believe and they think righteousness is imputed by works. When a man is still vacillating between those two opinions, that man is still trying to believe that he's the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I'm not talking about a believing man. I'm talking about a man who has believed. And how do you know that a man has believed? The Bible says the righteousness which is of faith speaks. That's what he said. The righteousness which is of faith speaks. How do you know that a man has been established in the righteousness of God? That man starts to speak a certain way. There are things that can't come out of his mouth anymore. He can't say, I'm bad. I'm this God. No, he knows that he is the righteousness of God in Christ. His speech changes. Some of you to prove that you have not yet settled. Your confession still come out as men under the law. He says the righteousness which is of faith. Or the righteousness which comes by faith. It speaketh. You learn to speak. You find yourself walking alone and you find these words coming out of your lips. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. When pain comes to your body, that's the first thing that comes to your head. It's the first consciousness that hits your spirit. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. I cannot be sick. When you see an activity of sin in your life, before you even think, you say, ah! I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. When your life is in danger, the first consciousness, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. It speaks. It speaks. But when you sit around certain believers, the things they confess show you that they do not understand this thing. They're still in the letter. And the Bible says that the letter what? Killeth. But the spirit giveth life. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. That's how you know. That's how you know that you have received the righteousness of God by faith through Christ Jesus. You start confessing it. You start speaking it upon your life. And you start imputing it on two others also. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But God is saying, don't end there. There was a faith you needed to receive the free gift of righteousness. The righteousness of God, it was wonderful. But now I want to put another degree of faith on you because you have received, because you have graduated, because you have understood it. Finally, now I'm giving you another faith. This is what Peter calls precious faith. Now, that's why he used the word obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God, our Savior, Jesus. Are you following what I'm saying? Those are the two faiths he's talking about in Philippians. You remember when I began in Philippians? Right? And be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ. The righteousness which is of God by faith. He's talking about two kinds of faith. Even though he's using the same idea of faith, some people think that it's the same degree. He's talking about one aspect faith, but he's talking about two degrees of faith in the same scripture. The one that comes by righteousness, but it is also a righteousness. There's a faith of Christ that embraces you when you receive the righteousness of God by faith. That's what he's trying to say. You need faith to get the righteousness of God. But when you get the righteousness of God, he adds you another kind and degree of faith as a reward. Have you understood it now? He says, oh, so you've believed that you're the righteousness of God in Christ? Okay, because you do now from today, the faith of the son of God is going to start operating on you. That faith is different from the faith you needed to receive the righteousness of God. Because that faith is not of Christ. 
Christ does not need to believe on God, that he's God, because he is one with God. There was never a time Christ made a confession that I accept God, as, you understand? Jesus was not led to salvation. That's what I'm trying to say. The faith of salvation is not of the Christ. Because Jesus was not led to what? To salvation. But when you receive Jesus, and you not only end there, but receive the gift of righteousness, you receive the faith of Christ. That means... Jesus enters you and he starts to believe in you. Let me say it in a more, more easier sense. When you receive him, he starts to, his faith starts to operate in you. That means you're not the one healing. No, his faith in you is healing. That means when you go to a blind man, whoa, you don't go as Kabogoza. No, Christ in you, the hope. Who has understood what I just said? Now, again, the blessings. Righteousness is not a doctrine. Ooh, it's a life. Now, let's go back to Peter. He says, they've obtained light pressure. Now, we are on this second faith. Huh? Second degree of faith. Now, he says, we have obtained light precious faith through the righteousness of God, our Savior, Jesus, through that righteousness, which we have received, but the righteousness of God, which comes by the other faith, which believed that we are the righteousness of God. Are you following? Now, you will realize after the word, Jesus Christ is a full colon, meaning because you have received the faith of Christ and you have embraced the righteousness of God through faith. The next verse says, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Grace and peace are multiplied. Hello? Grace and peace are multiplied. Oh, but I'm a believer. I don't see grace multiplied in my life. I don't see peace multiplied in my life. Simple. You're probably still struggling with the first level of faith to believe that you are the righteous of God. Because if you believe that you're the righteous of God, this faith will come automatically to multiply grace and peace. Praise the Lord Jesus. Through the knowledge of God, listen, and of Jesus our Lord, listen, the, the comma, comma, right? And of Jesus our Lord, comma, of Jesus our Lord, comma, this is for people who have understood that they are the righteousness of God. It's not for people who have simply believed that the, Jesus is the son of God. No, they have embraced that he has imputed righteousness on them. Now, these are the ones we're talking about. Grace and peace is multiplied and to them through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, comma, according as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the epignosis of him that has called us to glory and virtue. Who is understand what I'm saying? He means when you embrace the reality that you are the righteousness of God in Christ. Right? Grace and peace are multiplied because then to you all things that pertain to life and godliness to, to the man who is in the righteousness of faith he believes that all those things have been given. He speaks like a man who has. He doesn't speak like a man who is believing God to be given. Oh, again, that righteousness speaks. You don't wake up and say, I am believing God for a job. Ah, you're still there. I'm believing God for healing. Ah, you're still here. I, I hope one day we'll get this. You're still here. He has given, his divine power has given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the epignosis, to the knowledge, through the knowledge. This knowledge there is not progressive. It's not what you attained because they've preached today. No, it's what's already in your system because you have received the righteousness of God as a gift. 
Over who am I speaking to? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you following me? When he says, according as his divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness, he means when we are here in the righteousness of God, and God we believe that we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We know that his divine power has given us. We pray like men who know that his divine power has given us. We confess like men who know that his divine power has given us. We relate with people as men who know that his divine power has given us. We go wherever we are, regardless of what is in your pocket, your education, your connections, your, your, your contacts, your networks, whether you have them or you not, nothing changes the consciousness in your spirit that his divine power has given you all things that pertain to life and godliness. Because in you, it's not a progressive knowledge. In you, it's an advanced knowledge. It is an epignosis, the complete and perfect knowledge of God. That means you don't need somebody to sit you to remind you to believe it. No, when they're speaking it, they're simply confirming what is affirmed in your spirit. You're not progressively getting to know it as though every light is an affirmation, no. To you who is in the righteousness of God, every light is a confirmation of an affirmed position in God. When you have understood the righteousness of God in Christ, you cannot believe God for anything. Because you have believed God for everything that pertains to life and godliness. I can't believe God for joy because I have believed that I have joy. I can't believe God for divine health because I have believed that I have divine health. I can't believe God for a ministry because I have believed that I have the biggest ministry on the face of the earth. But Apostle, no, claim it also. That's what the Bible calls the rightness of faith, the righteousness of faith. Woo! Faith is right. For the Jesus, Timotheus and Silvanus preached. He says in him was no nay. That one. Whoa, wait. Yours has a no. Yours has a wait. Yours has a delay. Yours has a, I will think about it. But the one Timotheus, Silvanus, Apostle Grace. In him, there was no nay. The Bible says in him was yeah. All have been given. How can he say no when he has already been given? How can he take away what he has already given me? That is not the God I believed. That is not the God of the Bible. That is the God of men who have created religion. Theos has been interpreted philosophically. Come on, let God be true and every man a liar. The God I know said, I am who I am. And he said in me all things. Are here. So when I open my mouth like this, I hear him say, yeah, bring it on boy. Yeah, it's all yours. You got it, that's it. Are you hearing me? Because I'm here. I'm not here. I'm here. Somebody shout hallelujah. You stop praying a certain way. God, when will this pass? You can't pray that way. You see, let me help you understand. Jesus makes a very powerful statement in the Gospels. He says, to this end, I what? I came. He says, to this end, I came. And for this purpose came I in the world. Now I want you to understand how, how epignosis works. How the advanced and complete knowledge of God works. Right? Let's read it. He says, to this end was I born. And for this cause came I into the world. That I should bear witness unto the truth. That I should bear witness. And let me explain. When the son of Jesus tells you, to this end... 
was I born? He was born from the end. Who is understanding what I'm saying? He was born from the end. And for that cause, he came into that world. When Jesus entered the world, he entered it from the end. <laughs> he did not enter the world from the beginning. The son of God entered the world from the end. He was born from the end. In other words, he came back when he knew how the end is. He came from the end to come for us. And after coming to us, he took us back to the end. <laughs> He's the beginning and the end. Let me explain something in epignosis. When you understand the end of the Lord... When you go to the end of everything you've been given and then you come back into the world, you come to the world with a cause. But when you come with a cause, you don't come with the mentality of the world. He says, even though we are in the world, we are not of the world. Somebody shout hallelujah. You don't come and think that you need a car. You don't come and think you need a house. You don't come and think you need a family. You don't believe God to give you a car or a house or a business. You don't even believe to have a ministry. Because you saw it all. Purpose brings you back simply to manifest what you saw. Let me tell you, here is the deceiving part. Because many of you do not have accounts of your pre-existence in the flesh, you think that your pre-existence does not have a bearing in this geometry of the gospel. Before you were formed, I knew you and I called you. So when did you respond? Do you understand what I'm saying? Before you were formed, I knew you. I did not know you as a zygote. I did not know you as just this one little thing crammed together with, with nothingness. I saw the prophet in you. I saw the apostle in you. I saw the teacher in you. I saw the business in you. I saw the ministry in you. I saw the excellence in you. I saw the wisdom in you. That beauty was inside. Everything was there. You were not complete when you came out or you started forming in your mother's womb. No. You were complete in the one who knew you. The end was a prophet. Then, to this end you were born. Are you following what I'm saying? Now, because you do not know what happened before you transitioned in the earth, some of you think that that was nothingness. Let me explain something. You were something before you came in your mother's womb. You were something. Even if your mama said, I won't have you, God will still find a way to get you here. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You had to be here. You had to be here. There are many reasons you could have not been here. There are many reasons that would not have allowed you to be here. Some of you, there are many things that would have killed you when you were, but you are still here. If you're still alive, it means 
your purpose on earth has not yet been fulfilled and if your purpose on earth has not yet been fulfilled whether devils whether hell whether earth what nothing nothing shall kill you until you fulfill the purpose of God upon your life because for this cause you were born oh but the doctor said you have hiv for this cause you were born you're bigger than hiv before hiv was you were a prophet you were a preacher you were an evangelist who is understand what i'm saying before that incurable disease entered your body why did he anoint you if a new disease would kill you he will let let his righteous see corruption know his soul rot in hell he will not leave you he will not leave you he that began he that began i don't know who i'm talking to i don't care what is not working i don't care what is not moving i don't care what looks like it is stuck did he begin it he said he that began that good work Paul said, being confident. That he which began a good work in you will perform it until the day of Christ. Tell your neighbor, I have a confidence that I can't die before I fulfill my God-given mandate. I have a confidence that everything will wait it will wait it will wait why because to this end was i born that means he allowed me to enter the world when we had agreed that i'm finishing kama kule sirina jenda ga Come on somebody. Translated in English, I'm not going anywhere. I'm serving my God to the end. I have run my race, Paul said. I have finished my course. Now the crown of righteousness is on me. Full proof that I've seen God. That's how we go. Tell anybody that's how we go. That is why I speak against anything that could have wanted to take you early. in the sound of this anointing i decree upon your life you shall have a full life in fact i'm sensing like four spirits of death here they were wanted to claim people this year right now in the name of jesus you spirit of death wherever you are power goes loose i decree upon your life that you live a full life The Bible says your days of the earth shall be full. You shall go to your grave as a stock of wheat in its season. Shout amen. amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. Now the essence of epignosis is to plug in the life that was before it came. That's the essence of epignosis. it's to plug in the life that was before it came you plug inside you find that the things you know yet you don't remember hearing them in the flesh but when they speak them you feel like they make sense why do you think some of you still come every thursday because every time i preach your heart inside there your spirit is saying but the things is saying are right Your spirit has had them somewhere. These are confirmations. They're not affirmations. No. Somehow you say, mm. "Now in your normal mind you say, mm, this guy is making sense. He's making the gospel so simple." No. It wasn't complicated. You had just not yet plugged 
So if you're here and sometimes you come and say, eh, but the things the guy says, I don't understand them. You will understand them. Just give it time. How many of you the first, the first times you came, you, things didn't make sense. But you, you just found yourself in that. They're nice. Do I have a witness? You took some time without understanding the gospel. But when I, you just found yourself coming back into things you don't understand. And now you understand. Now when I start speaking, you say, mm. some of you even when I read the verse, you already know where I'm going. You start saying, Raka baka. why? Because you're plugged. It is eternal life. Somebody shout hallelujah. When you carry that mind, it's expected end. He says, if I know the plans that I have for you, the thoughts that I have towards you. He says, plan thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. He says, your expectation shall not be cut short. Why? Because you see it. Have you been in a situation where you're feeling things inside there? You, you don't know how they will come out, but you feel like God created you for something so big. And every time you hear the gospel, you feel you're drawing closer to that baby coming out. Every message you hear, you feel it is telling you at any time, this thing inside you is going to manifest. That is the joy of a believer. To know that God put something in me and that I will not die until it comes out. Satan might frustrate it. He might bring things, attacks on you. Things might slow you. Some of you, the world hit you. You got to a point, there are people here, you thought you'd be dead by now. You messed up, we're messed up. You flipped, we're flipped. Things happened in your life. You became busy, you disconnected. Lo and behold, 2019, you're still in the presence. The thing inside there is telling you, I'm not yet done with you. And he will not leave you until he fulfills. Somebody shout hallelujah. When you understand that faith, that is why when you go in 2 Peter, in verses 5, chapter 1 verses 5, the same chapter we're reading, he said, and besides this, he says, giving all due diligence, you add to your faith. Add to your faith is not a command there. Add to your faith is a nature issue because you've embraced it. You realize that when a man understands this righteousness of God, you add to your faith virtue. And to virtue, you add knowledge. And to knowledge, temperance. And to temperance, patience. And to patience, godliness. And to godliness, you find yourself in brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, love. For if these things be in you and abound, he says, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible says in the next verse, but he that lacketh these things is blind and he, can, he cannot see afar and has forgotten that he has been purged. You see, again, he comes back to the righteousness of God. He has been purged from his old sins. When you embrace this, goodness comes, virtue comes, self-control comes, you find yourself locking the zip. It just comes naturally. You find yourself being kind. You find yourself forgiving. You find yourself loving. Because it's faith. And we all know how faith comes. By hearing. And hearing by the word of God. The more you listen to this kind of message. The more you add to your faith. The more these things start to follow. And before you know that. Your fruitful in the knowledge of God. You're not barren. You produce results. Men can see and know that truly this man, this woman knows God. Raise your voice and speak to God. Come and talk to him. What I broken you made home 
And where I doubted You were sure I'll trust the love Never of my soul Talk to God What I loved You were fool And where I was broken You made whole That's why I trusted my lover. Somebody talk to God. Come on. Come on, talk to God. I believe I'm blessed. I've been given. Everything you, you have been believing, now believe that it is finished. From today, embrace it all as it is finished. Come on, talk to God. upon your life that you are the righteousness of God in Christ and that everything that pertains to life and godliness is yours through the knowledge of him that has called you to glory and virtue not suffering and turmoil I decree that the days ahead of you are going to be glorious your children are blessed your marriage is blessed your body is healthy your businesses will run your ministry will flourish your eyes will perceive your ears will hear it doesn't matter what is stuck I speak in the mighty name of Jesus that whatever was broken God made whole you don't have a story of brokenness you don't have a story of doubt you cannot doubt God the faith of Christ is inside you it illuminates your soul and comes out of you it exudes to do the impossible, to heal the sick, to cleanse the leper, to raise the dead, to do great, to do big, to do things. No eye has seen, ear has heard. No enter the hearts of man. Your week, your coming week is a success. Your coming months ahead are a success. The worst has already happened. The best is yet to come. Hope in the Lord. Your expectation shall not be cut short because God put it inside you. Great things await you. You're a mighty man of God. You're a mighty woman of God. Regardless of what has happened in your life in the past, forget the old. Now behold the new. The Bible says that men were caused to ride over us and destroy our lives. But the Bible says the Lord delivered us and he has released us into a wealthy place. You're more than a conqueror by Christ who strengthens you. That disease won't kill you. That weakness won't kill you. That poverty won't kill you. Nothing shall separate you from the love of God which is in Christ. He that began that 
could work in you. He will see it to accomplishment through the day of Christ. Give the Lord a mighty hand of praise. Come on, come for Jesus like you believe every word that has been spoken. Clap like you know what he's done. Clap like you have believed that all is available for you. You can't give up on God. You can't. But you can't. It's only a matter of time. Things will change. They will change. They will change. He says, I had fainted if I had not believed, not was not believing, had not believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I have believed that I am seeing the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I must see it while my eyes are still open in Jesus name if you're sick in your body receive your healing receive your healing receive your healing receive your healing it's done in Jesus name if you're there and you've never given your life to Christ and you said today I want that gift of righteousness in Christ come right now and receive him as your Lord and Savior this is the best thing you could ever do wow the best thing you could ever do. Some of you, it has been late. You've been delayed. You've hesitated. But now is the day he's calling you. You can't resist the love of God. It doesn't matter which mistake you've made. Even the worst in the history of the world. God can take it away. He says, for God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son for whosoever believeth in him, he should not perish, but he will have everlasting life. God believes in you. It doesn't matter what mistake you've done, God believes in you. Come. Heaven could not live without you. So God decided to give you salvation. Now you're going to put up your hands and just repeat these words after me. Speak from your heart. Say, God, I thank you for keeping me alive to speak these words today. I believe that Jesus is your son, that he was sent for my sins to die for me and now tonight I receive you Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior and I believe that you were raised from my glory tonight I embrace that life that you have I'm your righteousness I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at Uma Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero. Make manifest. Thank you.